The following is a hoop ball presentation. Hello and welcome to the Box Score Breakdown Show, a hoop ball presentation. This episode is brought to you by Hawaiian Isles Kona Coffee Company. Taste the Kona difference. Get some delicious coffee. Head over to HawaiianIsles.com. Uh, you can also find their coffee at Amazon. My name is Adrian Benjamins, and I'm joined, as usual, on a Sunday evening by Captain Kurt Beach. Kurt, how are you doing, brother? Adrian, I'm living a dream, my good man. How are you doing? I'm doing good, man. We got a really exciting slate of games in front of us. And, uh, you know, you and I, we we could just talk forever. So I can't think of any, um, you know, usually before we start recording the show, we kind of like, hey, should is there anything important we need to touch on other than the box score? Is there anything newsworthy that you think we need to hit up? The only thing that I don't know has been touched on, because I think it happened Friday, would be the Fisdale firing. Mm. Uh, I was keeping a really close eye on the New York Knicks, really seeing what would happen. And the new guy, I think his name's Mike Miller, I noticed he didn't really change much, still started Taj Gibson. Um, I don't know if, if that's what he's been told to do, but looking for some changes there to see what will happen with the point guard situation, see if Mitchell Robinson has new life. I would still be trying to – you might be able to buy low on him. I would still be doing that because I think he's ready to take off. Really, that's the main thing for me in terms of, I guess, news, just watching the Knicks very closely these next couple of days. Man, I feel like every night that you and I are – every Sunday that you and I have the Knicks on slate, I feel like we just constantly bashing them and what a dumpster fire they are. <laughs> so if you have any Knicks on your roster, I mean – you got to be hoping and praying that this can only be a good thing, right? I mean, it can't get any worse, right, Kurt? <laughs> right. And the other guy, I would try to sell high on Marcus Morris. I think, yeah. I think they promised him a bunch of shots, so maybe he doesn't get too much of a dip, but I expect some regression there, yeah. too. And, you know, even though he didn't, they didn't start Mitchell Robinson, I think he had a good game. Uh, I think it was either last night or Friday night. I think he had a pretty good game, so... If you have Mitchell Robinson, uh, you gotta just be really, um, you gotta be really hopeful that this can only be a good thing for him. And I think it will be. I think, you know, any Knicks that you have, this could only be a good thing. So I think so too. All right, Kurt, let's jump into the box scores. Let's, uh, let, I think the first game of the day was, uh, the Denver Nuggets and the Brooklyn Nets. This one was a really close game. The Nets getting the victory 105 to 102. I'm going to start on the Nuggets side first. And uh, Kurt, it's looking like that buy low window on Jokic is closing, man. It had a, a big 30 point game. I don't know if that was Friday. I think it was Friday. And now coming in hot in this one with 24 points, six assists, 11 rebounds. Uh, you know, if you drafted Jokic, you got to be pretty disappointing. Um, you know, you likely took him in the first six picks overall. So uh, definitely not returning anywhere near that value. But the last few games have been um, have definitely been better. So. Um, man, maybe if you were trying to buy low on him, it looks like that might be over. Uh, really good game for him. Uh, two threes, shot 10 to 21, perfect 2-2 two two from the line. Jamal Murray doing his thing, 21 points, 5 assists, 3 rebounds, 3 threes. He shot 4-4 four four from the line, 7-17 seven of 17 from the field. Um, Gary Harris, man, this guy's been, you know, he had a couple good games earlier in the week, but for the most part, disappointing. Um, only nine points, a block, three assists, three rebounds, three threes um, on three of ten shooting. I thought he'd be much better, but it's just not happening for him. Uh, Will Barton, you know, this wasn't a good game. Nine points, two steals, two assists, three rebounds two threes on three of six shooting but i think he'll be just fine paul Millsap as well um only nine points one assist four boards one three on three of eight shooting i think he'll be much better than this though hang tight with Millsap. um 
Grant got hot off the bench, man. He was feeling it from deep. Uh, five of seven from downtown for 15 points. Gave you a steal and a block as well. Two rebounds. You know, uh, I'm got him rostered in some deep leagues like like I'm talking 16 team or deeper but I'll tell you what man if Millsap ever went down I think uh, Jeremy Grant would get just insane boost so um, you know I kind of like that in deep leagues he's viable and also um, he's got like a double handcuff where if like Jokic or Millsap went down I think it would really open things up for Grant Um, you know other than that really I feel like I'm a broken record that you just it's those main guys on this Nuggets team they're so deep um, their starters do all the heavy lifting that you really don't trust much of these other guys Kurt what do you think of the Nuggets I, I think like you said Adrian you nailed it basically uh usual suspects here and the only thing I'll just echo real quick is uh, Nikola Jokic that's two really strong games in a row he was shooting a lot more these last two games so I don't know if the coach said you know you're gonna shoot it 20 times a game and let's see what happens they really want to get him going. I watched the first half of this game, and he didn't really look great. He just, his shot's kind of weird. It's just like <laughs> it, it doesn't look like he's got touch for a big guy. We know he does, but he just doesn't look good out there. He's He had some really silly turnovers. So I'm kind of surprised he ended with that stat line. He didn't look great, but he's not going to stay down in the third-round range all season. I think he's 35 on the season. Uh, So his owners are probably stoked about the last two games, Mm -hmm. but maybe they're still a little uneasy there on whether he can keep it up. So uh, the buy low window is definitely closing, but at this point you can probably still get him at a discount. I would try to do that because I think he's ready to take off. I don't don't see him really hitting that first round value, but he'll definitely be a lot better than where he is now. Yeah, for sure. What went down on the uh, Brooklyn side of this game? Well, sir, uh, Kyrie Irving continues to sit. Uh, I think we heard maybe another week or two. And honestly, I think the Nets are better without him. I think I heard that they were four and seven with Irving. <laughs> and I don't know what the record. I know it's been solid. It's been, I don't know, maybe nine and two. It's been really good without Irving. And they might be they might be better without him. You know, he's we hear a lot that he's kind of a toxic player to play with. And in his absence, Dinwiddie's just been going beast mode. 24 and 8 tonight. Um, where was he? I think. Give me just just one second here. Let me say in the last 30 days, average Dinwiddie is number 23 on the season. So he's just been killing it. You can try to sell high, but you're probably not getting a second rounder back. Everyone know, Ir- knows Irving is due to return. Uh, you probably just ride this out until unless you can get like a surefire third, fourth rounder. Maybe do that. If he's ever. Um, The go-to guy in a ball club like he is uh, right now for the Nets. Expect big things from him. The rest of the starters, uh, Torian Prince, 9-11-4 with one steal, one block, one three. Missed 10 shots, so that's a bummer, but he didn't turn it over as much as he normally does. Jarrett Allen, I feel like, is on fire lately. 19-11, played 30 minutes. He's clearly the center to own here. Joe Harris, a little quieter tonight, but still had 13-4-3 with two triples. DeAndre Jordan off the bench. He's actually surprising to me. He's in the top 100 on uh, 9 cat, uh, but he's just so quiet. I think you can probably do better, which is weird to say about a, a top 100 guy. Um, the other guy here would be Garrett Temple, who's starting. He had 15, 6, and 3 with one steal, three threes. Of anyone, he's probably the one that moves the fantasy needle the most for me here. And if he's available with Irving being out a couple, maybe a week or two more, maybe longer. And with who else are they missing here? Karis LeVert. I think Garrett Temple is somebody that you could pick up. He is currently, I want to say one seventeen, no one, one forty one on the season in the last 30 days, basically a threes and three and D kind of streamer. But I think he's a pickup at this point. What's your take on these guys, Adrian? Love your take on Garrett Temple. I think he's kind of um, knocking or already came through the door on standard leagues. He's 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 been pretty good lately, and uh, so make sure Garrett Temple's not sitting on your wire if you need some help. And uh, man, I gotta say, I'm pretty disappointed. I wasn't higher on um, on Jared Allen. I was just really scared that DeAndre Jordan was gonna. Um, ruin his value and kind of cancel him out but Jared Allen's been pretty solid and uh, 
Um, I wish I was higher on him. But anyways, um, you pretty much nailed everything else. I'm going to jump over to the next game, the Atlanta Hawks versus the Charlotte Hornets. The Hawks getting the victory uh, 122 to 107. I'm going to look in on the Atlanta side of this game. I'm going to start with Trey Young, uh, 30 points, 9 assists, 6 boards, uh, had four threes, shot nine and twenty, so shooting, you know, wasn't super great, but I mean, it's it's pretty decent. Um, eight of eight from the line, it's a pretty good game from him. Uh, Parker stepped up in this one, nineteen points, two blocks, and a steal, one assist, and seven rebounds, two threes on seven of twelve shooting, three of four from the line. Uh, Kevin Herter, you know, they're ramping up his minutes. I think they got him on a twenty-five minute limit i think it, you know they're 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 being very cautious with him but um make sure kevin herter is not sitting out there because i think um once he's up to starter type minutes you know what it it took him a while to get going at the beginning of the season really started slow but he's finally started to roll after a couple good games and then got hurt so let's see i think eventually he's going to start rolling again and put up some n- nice value um I picked up Damon Jones in a few deep, deep leagues. I'm talking 16 team and deeper, and uh, he's he's strung together a couple good ones. But tonight, uh, likely a lot of foul trouble here tonight. Five fouls in just 21 minutes, so we only had two points. Still gave you a steal and three blocks, one assist, eight rebounds. I think this guy's an okay add in deeper leagues. Um, he's starting. He's uh, before this game he put up two solid games in a row. So. Um, you know, maybe if he didn't have foul trouble, his line would have been uh, better. Um, DeAndre Hunter came off the bench, 10 points, one steal, five assists, three rebounds. I think we see Hunter maybe take a hit now that Herter's back. Also, when John Collins joins this uh, starting lineup, too, that could hurt Hunter quite a bit. But, you know, I still think Hunter should be owned uh, and should still start. Um, you know this Atlanta Hawks team um, they're not really playing for the playoffs or for a title so they should be looking to develop their young guys guys like Reddish and Herter and Collins and Young and Hunter so um, let's see what else uh, Len had a nice game in 19 minutes he had a big double double 13 points 10 rebounds and assists a steal a block but I definitely don't trust um, I don't trust Alex Len and especially if he's going to get 19 minutes on most nights i think that'll be pretty uh pretty empty there uh kurt anything i missed what do you think of the hawks um jabari parker uh he had a few down games but this one was better i would still try to move him before john collins comes back because even if he keeps starting which maybe he will maybe he won't but he'll definitely take a hit that value is going to come down and that cam reddish stuff we saw him get picked up after his last game where he went big Big minutes in the last two games, but we can't trust him yet, so I'm not interested there at all. Maybe maybe late, late in the season. On the Hornets' side, a uh, popular drop candidate in recent weeks has been P.J. Washington. I was advising against that because it didn't show up in the box score as much. He was playing limited minutes, 15, 16, 18 minutes in a lot of games, so he had about a seven-game run where he was not good and didn't play a lot of minutes, so a lot of people were jumping ship. But he was getting two fouls and getting pulled for a while, three fouls getting pulled again. So even though if you look in the box score, you might not see 5-6, 5-6 for his fouls, but fouls were definitely an issue for him. Um, But this Charlotte team is so bad, and he's one of the clear-cut starters here. There's really only six guys with fantasy value on this team, and he's one of them. I would hold on tight with him tonight, 20-8, and three assists, one steal, two blocks, two threes, and a... Nice 12 of 13 from the free throw line. He is currently number 118 on the season, which isn't fantastic. Uh, That's nine cap, by the way, but definitely worth holding. I'm keeping him anywhere I have him. Miles Bridges has been quiet so far this year, but he had 20 points, six boards, a steal, and three threes. He's coming around, played 38 minutes. Hold on there if you have him, maybe buy low. Terry Rozier, off shooting night, three of 13 from the field. He had eight, five, and four with one steal. Devontae Graham, who's been uh, one of the pickups of the year so far, 12, 6, and 8, two steals, two threes, also an off-shooting night, 4 of 17. 
So him and Rozier combined for a ugly 7 of 30 from the field. Bismack Biombo, um, he's continuing to start. He only played 15 minutes without foul trouble. Had 11 points, 4 boards, no blocks. I streamed him in a spot this week uh, for blocks with the 4-game week. It didn't pan out super great. Going to be dropping him later tonight. Cody Zeller came off the bench for 21 minutes. 11-6 and 2 with 2 steals. Only played 21 minutes. And we've heard that they're going to... I don't know if Biombo keeps starting, but the center rotation seems pretty fluid. And they kind of go with a matchup dependent lineup here. So I don't think either of them are great 12-team guys. Uh, Zeller a 14-teamer for sure. And in standard leagues, he's going to probably be picked up and dropped a lot this year if this continues. Michael Kidd Gilchrist played 23 minutes, 7 3 and 2, 1 block, 1 3. I'm not doing anything on that department. Nick Batum, unless I'm missing an injury, was a DMP CD tonight. Uh, shouldn't be owned in anywhere outside of deep leagues. Malik Monk, 9 points in 17 minutes. Uh, maybe a deep league guy, but nothing in standard or 14 teamers. Adrian, what's your take on these Hornets? Uh, I just want to mention, and I'm, I apologize if you mentioned it and I missed it, but I just want to mention, I think uh, P.J. Washington left the, this game in the fourth quarter with an ankle injury. Okay. So uh, it looks like it could be a right ankle sprain, left the game, didn't return. I mean, he had already um, – played a nice game and i don't know maybe they're just being safe uh the hornets do play they do have a back-to-back tuesday wednesday so uh curious you know if maybe he misses that that uh those two games but i wouldn't expect it to be anything serious just looks like an ankle sprain but possible he misses the next few games so just wanted to note that um Devontae graham man maybe um if i had to vote for pick waiver wire pickup of the season so far at this point he might be my vote for the uh, I guess you can also maybe throw uh, Rashawn Holmes and in that mix as well but Devontae Graham would be right up there at the top and uh Kurt I drafted Miles Bridges in like every league I'm in I thought this guy was just gonna go crazy I thought he was going to be insane, and and I've been really disappointed with Miles Bridges. And coming into this game, I think he's had some really low-scoring games where you know he gives you like eight or nine points. So um, I'm pretty happy that he scored 20 tonight, and I really hope he can get going here because uh, I bought a lot of stock in Miles Bridges on uh, um, draft day. Okay, uh, that's all I got. Let's keep it going. Next game up, the Chicago Bulls and the Miami Heat. Um, the Heat getting the victory 110-105. This was a lot closer than I thought it was going to be. Uh, I'm going to check out the Chicago side of this game, and uh, I'll start with Zach Levine. He's been, you know, after kind of a rough start to the season, he's been turning it on lately. Um, he had 18 points. Two steals, three assists, six boards, one three. Now, he only shot five of 19. He had seven turnovers, so it wasn't all good tonight. But I am encouraged that he has been playing a lot better lately. And also, man, 41 minutes. He just gets a lot of a tick and a lot of usage on this team. Um, let's see, who, who else played good? Lori Markkinen, another guy who's kind of been turning things around lately. It was really rough with him for a while so kind of happy to see that he's starting to come around 22 points a steal two assists and seven boards four threes on eight of 15 shooting carter uh only seven points and 10 rebounds no blocks a steal but he's been pretty good lately usage really low in this one man only took three shots in 40 minutes that's like you know uh starting center only taking three shots in 40 minutes like you would think by accident just by grabbing some offensive rebounds and putbacks you would get way more than three shots so um but he's been playing pretty good so stick with him this guy has been a popular ad in a lot of leagues and uh chris dunn uh if he's still available i think it could be time to move on this guy starting looks like he's got that starting point guard spot locked up played 34 big minutes here tonight actually fouled out in this one so maybe he would have even got more than 34 minutes um 
16 points, three steals, two assists. Love the defensive contribution that he provides. Uh, five rebounds, no threes. That's not really his thing. But uh, tonight shot six of nine from the field, four or five from the line. Uh, Sadoransky, this was not a good game. Um, six points, two assists, three rebounds on two of eight shooting. But he's been pretty solid for the most part. I think you got to stick with him, of course. Um, the bench... I don't trust anyone off this bench. Um, and that's about it. Kurt, what do you think of the Bulls? Um, only thing I got is, like you said, Chris Dunn. He's quietly a really solid pickup, averaging two steals on the year. And that's with the, the wonky rotation happening. So if he's going to start, he's going to be great for steals. He's going to get you assists. Uh, scored 16 tonight. Usually he's not going to score a ton. But I'd rather have him over uh, somebody like a Frank Nilakina or Dennis Smith maybe Alfred Payton. That's a close one between him and Alfred Payton. The other thing I got is Laurie Markkinen. Man, the last four games, he's he's been, let's see, he was at 22 points tonight, 20, 15, 20, and he had four threes in each of the last four games. So he's really turning it on. Uh, he's number 51, nine cat, in the last seven days. So he's really picking it up. Owners are probably stoked to see that. The buy low window is probably closed. But his season rank is still super low. So if you're in a league where people just overvalue uh, actual rankings, you can probably still get him at a discount because it looks like he's really heating up here. You know, um, I, I want to add real quick. Uh, I forgot to mention this game went to overtime. So, you know, uh, Levine getting over 40 minutes, Carter getting over 40 minutes, Laurie getting 38 minutes, likely seeing these big minute totals due to the overtime. Yeah, for sure. Um, on the Heat side, Myers Leonard continues to start, just takes minutes from Kelly Olynyk. so bummed about that. Jimmy Butler is having a great year, 23-6-7, one steal, one block, only 3 of 14 from the field, didn't hit any threes, but seven of 20, 17 of 21 from the free throw line. He is currently number seven on the season. I did not expect him to be this hot. I thought maybe early second round type value. He's been really hot so far. Bam Adebayo, 21, 13, and 6 with three steals, one block. Did have seven turnovers, so that kind of hurts you. But he was 7 of 9 from the free throw line, so not as bad there. Also 7 of 9 from the field. Good line overall for Bam. Kendrick Nunn has been trending down, not getting the shot attempts that he had earlier in the season without Jimmy. But still 18, 3, and 3, two three-pointers. Um, I think he's kind of fringe-worthy in standard leagues. I would still be holding, but I think there's going to become a time where he's going to become a lot of teams' most droppable player. Let's see. Duncan Robinson has been a, a hot pickup for his three-point shooting. I picked him up in a few places. He had four fouls tonight, which may have been what limited him, him to only 22 minutes. Still had nine points, three threes, four boards, and three steals. I would hold on to him where I have him. Tyler Hero, he's been kind of sporadic this year. Played 41 minutes. Five threes, 27 points, six boards, three assists, one steal. I think he's currently at around 150 in standard leagues or standard uh, nine cap. So hold on to him. Probably better things are in store for him as the season continues and he gets more familiar with the NBA and with the system. Couldn't blame you if you needed to cut somebody. Derek Jones Jr., we like his stats set for his defensive numbers, but. It just wasn't there tonight. 26 minutes for three and four, no defensive numbers. Kelly Olynyk had been a hot pickup for a while. He played 25 minutes today, only three points, two rebounds, one steal, one three. Currently on the season, he's number 123 in 9-cat. Uh, he had been pretty good prior to tonight, but this seems to be the case a lot with Olynyk and Spolstra is that his, his minutes are just kind of up and down. He had that six-minute game. So still worth owning in standard leagues, but I couldn't blame you if you wanted to cut him for a hot free agent. That's really all I've got here on the Heat. Adrian, did I miss anything? I just want to say that uh, I've got Bam out of Bayou in quite a few leagues, and he was iffy coming into this one. So uh, I get really excited, Kurt, when a guy's like on like the verge of not playing, and then he ends up playing and gives you a nice line i always feel good about it so and uh the the other thing i want to mention is this team's a little messy because other than butler at a 
buy you maybe none even though none's been kind of up and down lately it's really tough to trust any of the other guys here on it like on a night-to-night basis it seems to switch off like uh, Kelly Olynyk couldn't give you a nice line, and then the next day it's Duncan Robinson, and then you know let's not forget Goran Dragic, Dion Waiters hasn't even entered the fray. Justice Winslow, if these guys get back, it, it just makes it even more muddy. It just makes it even more cloudy and hazy. So it's a kind of a messy team for fantasy because uh, it's like Jimmy and Bam doing most of the heavy lifting, and other than that. It, kind of changes from night to night for sure okay let's jump over uh to the next one the toronto raptors and the philadelphia 76ers the sixers getting the victory 110 to 104 you know both these teams really good teams this could be a preview of uh a playoff matchup in the eastern conference uh so really good game 110 to 104 Sixers getting the win. I'm going to take a look on the Toronto side of this game. I'm going to start with Kyle Lowry. You got to be pretty excited uh, to get Lowry back if you had him in your IR or you had him on your bench. 26 points, two steals, five assists, six rebounds, four threes on seven of 14 shooting from the field. He was eight of nine from the line. Siakam with 16 points, a steal, two assists, uh, seven boards on seven of 18 shooting, two or three from the line. OG and Anobi with a very nice game here, a big double-double, 19 points with 10 rebounds. He also gave you five defensive stats with the four steals, the block, two assists, gave you two threes. This is a really nice line, actually, with eight of 14 shooting from the field. Gasol, man, Definitely did not have it going in this one. O of six gave you the goose egg and points. Um, man, this one is not a good game. One block, three assists, four rebounds. Um, so it's better than nothing. Uh, Van Vliet left this game. Um, let me make sure I got this right. Van Vliet. He left this game early. Uh, looks like a knee contusion. Did not return. This is really disappointing. Very concerning for me. Kurt, I got a lot of shares of Van Vliet. And, uh, you know, I got some trade offers that I declined for Van Vliet. So I'm really hoping that this is nothing serious. Knee contusion. Let's hope it's nothing um, two, only two points. He only played 12 minutes because he didn't come back in this one. Um, let's see. If he is going to miss time, uh, Powell might be the pickup. Now, he only had eight points. Gave you a block, two steals, two rebounds, one three on three of eight shooting in 23 minutes. Serge Ibaka had a nice game off the bench, 12 points, three assists, seven boards, two threes on five of 15 shooting. He's definitely viable in a lot of leagues. Um, you know, I know a lot of people in deeper leagues were streaming guys like Terrence Davis. He had six points in just 17 minutes. Hollis Jefferson was a popular stream while Lowry was out as well. He had 12 points in 16 minutes. I don't think in standard leagues that we can really look to those guys with Lowry back unless we hear that Van Vliet's going to miss an extended period of time. But even so, I don't think those guys would be viable in most standard leagues. Um, Kurt, what do you think of the Raptors? Um, I think Norm Powell, who got a lot of hype, is probably droppable. He had one good game when Lowry returned, but kind of quiet tonight. So I think he's probably a droppable guy for most standard leaguers. Uh, like you said, bummer to hear about that for Fred Van Vliet. He's been scorching hot this year. Number 12 on the season. I'm bummed I don't own him anywhere. Uh, but what I kind of like to do is one of my strategies that – Maybe he's not the best idea, but if he's going to miss some time, what I like to do when guys are going out with injury is test the waters with the manager and send out some buy low offers. Sometimes you can get a guy at a discount if you buy him when they're hurt, and sure, you might not know what you're getting into. Maybe he's going to be out an extended period of time, maybe not, but for me, that's what I like to do when I see somebody's out for a while, send that buy low offer out there. Um, and OG Ananobi, like you said, is having a great year. I saw some drop questions for him because he doesn't score a lot. He's kind of all over the box score, but number 75 on the season. If you have somebody who's thinking about if they're in the mentality that he's a drop candidate, try to trade for that guy. On the Sixers side, Tobias Harris went big with 26, 6, and 3. One block, four threes, played 39 minutes. Uh, Great game for him. 
Al Horford, 11, 4, and 5, one steal, two blocks. Joel Embiid has been dealing with, I believe, a hamstring issue. So he sat out the other day. So his line was pretty lackluster tonight. Eight, sorry, eight boards, six assists, 10 points, one steal, one block in only 30 minutes and also had seven turnovers. Ben Simmons went for 16, 11, and 9. And Firkin Korkmaz started but didn't do much there. He's an okay three-point streamer, but there are better ones out there. The guy who I'm probably paying the most attention to here is Matisse Tybel, and that's only because Josh Richardson has been out with a hamstring issue for the last five. Again, I would try to buy low on him while he's hurt because he's, he's been having a solid year. But Matisse Tybel had 20 points, two boards, three assists, three steals, one block, five three-pointers, and he played 32 minutes. So... I don't know, it's tough, because we don't know how long Jay Rich is going to be out, but we know what Tybal can do on the defensive end, and if he's going to be scoring a little bit now, hitting 5 of 8 from three-point land, he's somebody that I have a close eye on, especially if we hear that Jay Rich is going to be out extended time. Um, the other, other, other thing that I want to touch on, just real quick, going back to the Raptors, is Kyle Lowry, you know, being back, 38 minutes again tonight, which was one of the things that concerned me before he went out with the injury. They're still, he's back now and they're still trucking him out there 38 minutes. Hmm. I know Fred Van Vliet went out and they don't have a whole lot off the bench, but I mean, that's that's the amount of minutes that usually end up with uh, Lowry in the infirmary ward. So <laughs> great numbers, but kind of concerning if you're a Lowry owner. Little all over the place here, Adrian, but no, <laughs> what I've- else you got? I I think that was great for you to mention, and I agree with you. I think the large minute total, like I think they definitely don't want Kyle Lowry playing close to 40 minutes a night, um, especially after he's already missed time at the beginning of the year with that thumb injury. I think a lot of this had to do with Van Vliet. With with no yeah. Van Vliet there, it's like Lowry had to play some uh, some extra time. And I do want to mention, I. I believe the Raptors play as soon as tomorrow. I think they're at Chicago. So uh, there's a really good chance that Van Vliet misses that one. And maybe we see Lowry uh, play even more minutes on a back-to-back. I agree with you, Kurt. Lowry is a guy who has extended injury history issues. So you don't want to see this guy uh, playing such big minutes, especially on a back-to-back. Um Real quick on the Philly side, I just want to say, man, Thibel, this is such a great game for him, and I love uh, that he gives you those defensive stats uh, with the steals and gives you threes. You gotta love a guy like that. I just want to remind the listeners that his floor is also pretty low. You know, you see a line like this, and I mean, I want to snatch him up everywhere after seeing this, but just know he could really give you a low-end line when it's not happening. So, um tough to rely on and you know I'm really surprised that Josh Richardson's missed as much time as he has so I'm thinking Richardson's gonna be back very soon but I don't think that's been made official yet I don't think we've heard exactly when uh Richardson plans to return so uh go get Thibel I guess Yes, sir. Okay, let's jump over to uh I think the next game was the Clippers and the Wizards and uh, the the Clippers getting the victory, 135 to the Wizards, 119. I'm going to look in on the L.A. side of this game. I'll start with Kawhi Leonard, 34 points, 5 assists, 11 boards, 1 steal, 3-3, three shot a very efficient 12 of 18 from the field, 7 of 8 from the line. This is uh, pretty much as good as it gets for Kawhi. This is outstanding. Um, Mo Harkless got some extended run here. 36 minutes for him. He had 11 points, two steals, a block, and assists, six rebounds with three threes. This is a pretty nice game from him, but tough to trust him on most nights with uh, how deep this Clippers team is. Uh, Paul George with 27 points, four steals, six assists, six rebounds, three threes on 11 and 21 shooting. It's a pretty good game from PG. Um, you know, likely had a little bit of foul trouble too. Five fouls in the 26 minutes. Pat Beverly with nine points, four assists, seven boards. A little disappointing to not see him have any steals in this one, but did have three threes. Um, shot three of five from the field. 
uh, Zubak, you know, starting, but it's really uh, Mantra's Harrell is the guy you want. Zubak with only 7 points versus Harrell's 20 points. Harrell also gave you 5 boards with uh, on 8 of 12 shooting. Lou, Will, D- Lou Williams doing his thing off the bench. 18 points, 6 assists, a rebound, 2 threes on 7 of 17 shooting. Those are your main guys on the Clippers. Every once in a while, um, you know, some of these other guys could step up, but you definitely don't trust any of these other guys on in standard leagues. Um, Kurt, what do you think of the Clippers? I think you nailed it, really. It's, it's those... Those top four guys, you know, Kawhi and PG, and then the second tier is Harold and Lou, and then you get some some fringy value out of Pat Bev. But other than that, I'm not interested in any of them. Yeah, and I, I want to know. I don't. I think I don't know if this was the Clippers back to back or if they play tomorrow. But if they play tomorrow, I think you could definitely count on Kawhi missing that one just due to the load management thing. Um, yeah, uh, they play the Pacers tomorrow, so uh, I would count on Kawhi being out of that one. Maybe fire up uh, Paul George in um, DFS. I don't know. Yeah. Well, what went down on the Wizards side of this game? Well, we have uh, Thomas Bryant, who is out three weeks. It, it might be closer to two now, or I'm sorry, he's going to be reevaluated in that time. So just keep in mind when they say reevaluated. That doesn't mean he's coming back in three weeks. That might be they look at it and say, okay, he's going to miss a few more weeks. And a foot injury for a big guy is concerning. So, obviously, uh, Mo Wagner, must-own guy. Um, Maybe maybe you could find this, Adrian, if I can't. Uh, He only played 18 minutes tonight, which is kind of strange because normally what limits him is foul trouble. And he only had two fouls tonight, so I don't know why he only played 18 minutes. Uh, Rui Hachimura. He was a guy that wasn't necessarily a must-own in standard leagues. But with Big Tom out, he's a must-own guy. Just for the sheer amount of time he's going to be on the court, 37 minutes tonight, 17-7, and seven, four assists. No defensive numbers, but we've come to expect that from him. But if he's going to be out there that amount of minutes, I mean, it's easy to fall into a steal or a block. No turnovers, so that maybe balances out the no defensive numbers. He didn't have any threes, but he was a perfect 7-7 seven seven from the free throw line. So, hold on to him. He's going to have a good year. Or, or, I mean, at least while Tom Bryant's out, hold on to him for sure. Uh, Ish Smith starting in place of Isaiah, Isaiah Thomas, who I hear is supposed to miss at least a couple more games. Uh, that I forgot where I saw that listed. Some places I was saying he was day-to-day, and then somewhere else I saw that he's out for a few more games. And I think he, he personally said he was out a few more games, I believe. Uh, anyway, Ish Smith might be a streamer in the meantime. 14 and 5 with four assists, no defensive numbers, five turnovers, had two threes, played 31 minutes. Uh, Bradley Beal, 5 of 18 from the field, hurt you there, but helped you at the free throw line, perfect 9 and 9 for 20 points, two rebounds, five assists. Pedestrian line for Brad Beal. Isaac Bonga started, nothing worth mentioning there. Troy Brown Jr. played 35 minutes off the bench. He's been a fringy kind of guy. 22 points, five boards, four assists, two steals, two threes. Uh, he's not really a standard league guy. On the season, he's 156. So that that puts him, I guess, if you're talking about the top 156 players in standard league, he is just as far down as you can still be and still be in standard league discussion. But 14 and deeper, you should own him. The guy that I was avoiding here because he was the one I was most excited about was Davis Bertans. He's played 28 minutes tonight. He's going to get extra run with the Tom Bryan injury. 25 points, three boards, two assists, one steal. He took 12 three-pointers, 12, and made six of them. On the season, he is number 45 in nine-cat average. I picked him up off the waiver wire in a league, I think, about a week ago. Somebody dropped him, and I was stoked to be able to scoop him up. He is been fantastic listen to this count for three-pointers over the last few games uh adrian for bertans six five seven four six two four three four six four five just absolute killer from three-point land and he does it on good percentages he's shooting 45.9 from the field so not bad from a guy who's nailing threes and 87 from the free throw line 
He also doesn't seem to do a lot more than that, but he's getting you about five boards and he's getting 0.6 steals, 0.6 blocks, and to balance it out, only 0.7 turnovers. So super stoked about him. What do you think, Adrian? What did I miss here? You didn't miss anything. Bertons is nice, man. Make sure that he's not sitting on your wire. Uh, Kurt, I'm really concerned about Thomas Bryant. And, of course, I got him everywhere in the hoop ball staff league my home league we're talking about a seven foot center with the stress reaction issue i mean that just doesn't sound good uh, we're hearing weeks and that's for evaluation so double check that mo wagner bertons is not sitting on your wire those guys need to be owned kurt you mentioned a uh, little fishy what Mo Wagner's playing time. I think what happened is Clippers like to go small. I think Wizards kind of matched their small lineup and it just wasn't a good night for Mo Wagner with the Clippers going small. The Wizards decided to go small as well. So I think that's why okay. we only saw him get the 18 minutes here. Uh, so, hey, if somebody's you know, if those uh, guys in your league that they that they're not really paying attention, if they decide to drop Mo Wagner because they're like, oh man, this guy's only getting 18 minutes, to swoop and make sure you pick him up because I think he's going to be really good. One last thing I want to say, and then we'll uh, move on. I I didn't think Ish Smith would be good because at the beginning of the season when Isaiah Thomas wasn't playing, Ish Smith wasn't doing anything. He's put three solid games in a row. The game before this one, he had 15 points, 8 assists. The game before that, he had 19 points with 8 assists. So three games in a row with over 14 points. I think Ish Smith needs to be rostered we know isaiah thomas is not the consistency of health so uh i think ish smith is even viable in uh standard leagues go make sure that that guy's rostered as well um oh one last thing rui hachimura i feel like he's been a pretty hot the last few maybe he is benefiting as well from the thomas bryant from no thomas bryant so uh he's another guy all of a sudden kurt wizards are feeling a little hot right now they got some guys that you want to grab so it's nice okay let's jump over to the next game the sacramento kings taking on the dallas mavericks this one was this was a good game man the kings getting the victory 110 to 106 uh i'm gonna look at the sacramento side and uh you know i'm gonna start with my favorite player on the kings a hoop ball favorite rashawn holmes you know, not the greatest line tonight well you know 12 and 9 is great but um he's, he's just been hot lately and you know on the player raider in nine cat leagues he's really hot he's like putting up second round value right now if you pick this guy up you got to be so ecstatic kurt i'm not even scared about marvin bagley i think holmes has been so good i'm hoping that he's going to start at center next to bagley and i'm thinking that holmes still sees starter type minutes even when bagley returns so i'm not worried um a guy that i guess i gotta mention tonight Nemanja Belica now this is a guy that I'm worried about with the return of Marvin Bagley looming on the horizon now Belica beautiful game here 30 points four assists a steal a block seven boards four threes on 13 of 18 shooting from the field this is a spectacular game from him but I don't know maybe sell high um because I think he's really going to be the one that gets hurt the most with Marvin Bagley's back soon. Harris, um, Harrison Barnes with 13 points of steal, five assists and seven boards on six of 15 shooting. Buddy Heald with a nice game, 26 points, five assists, four boards, five of six from downtown, 10 of 15 from the field. Beautiful game from Buddy Heald. Corey Joseph's getting the start, but he's just so low usage. Uh, his floor is so low. Tonight is why. Three points in 29 minutes. It's just uh, not a guy that I think you can trust. A guy that I do think you can trust, Bogdanovich. Ten points, three assists, three rebounds. Um, not the greatest game from him, but uh, I think he'll be much better. I'm not sure how it's going to pan out with him when Bagley comes back. Uh, we'll have to wait and see on that one. You know, other than that, not a lot else that I really trust on this roster. Kurt, what do you think of the Sacramento Kings? Um, well, I, I'll just say, like you said, Nemanja Bielitsa, the train's about to uh, come to its its last stop here. What a monster line from him. And maybe that's his swan song. We hear 
Marvin Bagley isn't playing, I think, in their next game, which I believe is tomorrow, but should be back after that. I love Rashawn Holmes like you do. All of us hoop ballers picked him up everywhere I could. What I am a little worried about Bagley returning, though, I think it will ding Holmes a little bit, as much as I hate to admit it. And the only reason I think that is because Having both Holmes and Bagley out there, I know Bagley can hit, chip in a three here and there, but having both those big guys out there and neither one of them being much of a floor spacer, Bielitsa took seven threes tonight and made three, and we know he's capable of doing that on a nightly basis. So that's why I'm a little concerned. I know everyone says Bielitsa is just going to fade and Holmes is going to be fine. I think I think both of them take a decent ding. So... I think Bielitz is more toward the cut line if you're trying to make a preemptive cut. But I think I'd keep holding on based on what he's given us so far. See how the first couple games go with Bagley back before I cut. But Holmes, I think, will take a small ding, which I'd hurt, hurts me to say. I hope it's not a lot, and I hope I'm wrong. But I think now is the perfect time to try to sell high because, like you said, he's been putting up, I think he's number 14 on the season in totals and 36 uh, on a per game average so he's doing amazing I tried to float him out there for Mitchell Robinson in a couple places you know with Mitch Rob trending up Holmes slightly trending down it didn't go but that's something that I think I would do in most leagues if I could I was surprised to see how similar a lot of their numbers there are but the thing with Mitch Rob is that he's a difference maker for those those blocks I mean he can win you that category by himself so maybe that's something you could look to do other than that uh, just echoing on Bogdan Bogdanovich, we said he was a sell high guy for the last couple of weeks. He was number six on, I think, if you looked at the last two weeks, about a week or 10 days ago. So he's really tailed off since then. If you sold high, congratulations. If you weren't able to do that, I understand. Really, I don't know, Adrian. What, what do you think about that whole situation again? Do you think I'm. I No, I, you know what? I think you're right on. I. I Holmes will definitely see a hit when Bagley comes back, only because Bagley offensively is way more polished than Holmes. Bagley likes to live in the paint as well, so you like we're gonna see likely scoring numbers come down, maybe even some rebounds come down. So Holmes will take a hit. I think what I meant is I'm not concerned. Is I think Holmes is still gonna be on the court. Like I'm not worried about his minutes going down, and the reason is Kurt is because. This team doesn't really have a lot as far as rim protecting bigs. Holmes is like their best option as far as the defensive presence at the rim. Bagley's really not an elite defender. Um, you know, that was one of the biggest knocks on Bagley coming into the real NBA draft a season ago was that this guy's in, in college. He wasn't a great defender so uh i think holmes is just their best defensive option it's gonna keep him on the floor but i do agree with you kurt holmes is gonna see a dip in production just because bagley his usage is high he's gonna gobble up some of those boards and whatnot but for the most part you know this is a guy you picked up holmes is a guy you picked up off the wire he's still gonna oh, yeah. i mean i think he's still gonna be returning like top top 40 value and i'm ecstatic about that so uh i love your take though on hey if you know somebody's not really thinking about the bagley return he's you know not a guy that's in the limelight a lot i love your take on trying to sell high on homes i mean you click on the player raider and homes is sitting with the second round value you can likely get a lot for rashawn homes right now there's not a lot of buzz about homes taking a big hit so you know not a lot of casual fantasy players are worried about rashawn homes so i love your take kurt see i mean i love that idea of you trying to get mitchell robinson i think that was a great idea so Would you uh, do that um I'll tell you what, if I had blocks, if I was doing okay in blocks, I would do that only because I think Holmes's value overall is going to be better than Mitchell Robinson. Now, if I'm strictly hunting blocks, I think Mitchell Robinson will be superior to Holmes in that block category, which we know a lot of people are desperate. Oh, Kurt, I'm in like three leagues where I am so desperate for blocks that uh, yeah. it's it's like because of that block the scarcity on that block factor I would have rather have Mitchell Robinson but again if I got a team where I got blocks locked up I would maybe in a just overall value I would maybe rather have uh, 
Rashawn Holmes there. I, I agree, know. man. And it was it was hard when I sent that offer out. I'm looking at their <laughs> season averages, and Holmes looked better in every category, yeah. minus blocks. I'm like, oh, do I really want to do this? Can, can yeah. I say, Holmes, tonight, six of eight from the field? I feel like this is every night. He's like, you know, gives you really great field goal percentage, good rebounder. Uh, you know, tonight the defensive stats weren't there, but usually he's okay there. So, I mean – the player Raider speaks for itself, man. The fact that he's sitting total value so high lets you know that he is really a sneaky good player in fantasy, especially in those category leagues, man. Kurt, what, Absolutely. Went, what went down on the Dallas side of this game? Before I jump over to Adrian, can I just go back to them one more time? Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you know what's funny? When we're looking at these teams, I usually pull up by, by team and look at their season-long averages. You know who's number one? On nine cat averages for the Kings, it's Rashawn Holmes, obviously. Wow! But what's crazy after that? You know who number two is? Uh, okay, I'm not looking. I would guess <laughs> Buddy Heald. I would guess. I would too. It's actually Bealitza at 78. Jeez, Heald. Yeah, and Heald at 83, and his default ranking coming the season was 36. So he's still a buy low guy. He's. I would put money on him finishing in the top 50 if not better currently wow. at 83 and a lot of that is his field goal percentage at 40 percent on the field so buy low on him wow all right on the maverick side we know it's really a two-person show here porzingis he's been quiet and kind of disappointing this year 13 and 8 with one assist one block one three really takes a back seat to luca he is currently number 81 on the season, so he's a buy low guy. Uh, owners are probably disappointed in that regard. His unicorn stats, the threes and the blocks, continue to come down with, I feel like, each passing game. Now he's sitting at 2.0 and 2.0. Luka Doncic, kind of actually a quiet game. In his, by his standards, 27, 7 and 8, no steals, no blocks, six turnovers, three threes. He'll be fine. I think he's a top three, top five kind of pick for probably the next decade. We're really looking to see if anyone else can emerge with fantasy value here. The other night, it was Boban Marjanovic. He had, I think, 15 and 16. But we know that Boban needs those minutes. So that was more of an aberration. DMP CD tonight. So forget about that. Dwight Powell had a couple okay games tonight. Six and five, two assists. I picked him up in a few spots thinking maybe he can get it together. Everyone was kind of hopeful on him being a top 80, top 100 guy coming in the season. Really disappointed and have a couple of good games. Uh, I think I, I'm dropping him again. I wouldn't blame you if he's he's on the wire in almost all of my leagues. Dorian Finney-Smith started, had 13, 8, and 3, one steal, three threes. I want to see him do that a few more times before I'd consider picking him up. And the other guy who I think is closest to being a pickup here, if he's not already owned in a lot of leagues because of his, his hot run a couple games ago, Tim Hardaway Jr., he had 29 points and nine three-pointers, two assists, one steal, no turnovers, nine of 12 from three-point land. He took 13 shots total, so 12, uh, 12 of his 13 shots from three-point land, but he's not going to make 75% of them every night. And the thing with Hardaway is that if his shot's going down, his line looks nice from the scoring and threes department. If it's not going down, he completely vanishes because he doesn't do anything else in the supporting stats. One rebound, two steals, one assist. And overall, I was high on him a couple years ago, but he hurts you so much in the field goal percentage, shooting 41% this year, and he's so up and down. So tonight, nine threes, 29 points. Night before, one three, 14 points. Game before that, one three, seven points. Two threes, 12 points, zero, and eight. He's just all over the map. In the end, it balances out to, gosh, right now he is currently 169. So actually outside most standard league value. But for three-point streamers, he's a good guy to have considering that he could be the number three option here. But he's very streaky. He's very streaky. Uh, let's see. Who else? kind of reaching here adrian <laughs> uh did delon Wright not play today not that he's he, been exciting but he's been out with a right abductor injury 
and it okay. could he he's considered day to day to day, but I also would not be surprised if he misses more time, like a, okay. another game or two. Um, and then uh, I just want to add, you know, this Mavericks team kind of reminds me of what I said about the Heat, where you got two guys doing all the heavy lifting, Porzingis and Doncic, and then on night to night, it's like. Uh, tonight, Finney Smith and Hardaway played good. Tomorrow, it could be Dwight Powell and Brunson or Bure. It's like so or hard. It, it, it's just so hard on a night-to-night basis other than the top two guys to peg. I mean, Kurt, I see a guy like Finney Smith. He's got the starting spot, spot locked up, played 35 minutes tonight, had a nice line. It's like I, I want to go at a guy like this, and then tomorrow can just give you completely nothing. So, um, yeah kind of disappointing that this Mavericks team doesn't pump out more fantasy assets um, other than Porzingis and Luka Doncic. It's a little disappointing. For sure. Uh, all right, let's 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 roll to the next game. The Oklahoma City Thunder taking on the Portland Trailblazers. Um, the Thunder getting the victory 108-96. to and uh, I'm going to take a look at the Oklahoma side of this game. First, I'm going to start with Shea Gillis Alexander. 21 points, a steal, three assists, nine rebounds, two threes on five of 14 shooting. Danilo Gallinari with 12 points, seven rebounds, one three. He shot four of 11. Chris Paul has been pretty good this season. 20 points, three steals, two assists, two threes on seven of 17 shooting. He was four or five from the line. Steven Adams was really starting to turn things around, but tonight did not have it going. Only six points in 28 minutes. He shot two of six from the field. No defensive stats, four assists, and nine rebounds. Nader got the start for, I believe, Terrence Ferguson and uh, only played 19 minutes, uh, maybe had some foul trouble, had four fouls, seven points. You likely, of course, are not... um, Hopefully you don't have Nader in a lineup. And off the bench, the guy, the two guys that you want to own is Dennis Schroeder and Nerlens Noel. Schroeder with 21 points, two assists, two rebounds, three threes on seven of 14 shooting. Noel double doubled, 13 points, 12 rebounds, a steal, two blocks. You know, even though Noel is coming off the bench, he's been putting up some nice value. Likely owned everywhere. I think in every single, even in some of my shallow leagues, he's. He's been owned for quite some time. Um, not too much else I can think about. Kurt, what do you think of the Thunder? The only thing, man, what's crazy to me is a lot of people steer away from CP3 and Danilo because of their injury history. You know, each of them, which is kind of surprising, has yet to miss a game this year. Wow. They both played wow. in all 21 games, which is shocking. The CP3 has been having a great year, number 30 on the season. Danilo, number 39. And he was a preseason rank of 64, uh, nine cat. So I think Danilo's a bit of a sell high considering he's a couple rounds above where he was drafted in most places. And we don't really know what's going to happen in the future with a Thunder. Does he get traded? Does he get shut down? But he, he's been having a really good year. So it's hard to sell a guy like that if you're in a league that's more than a casual league because everyone knows that he's very injury prone and they they know the situation there for him's a little murky but at least try the waters i would say yeah and then a guy who's maybe a buy low at least if you can think think he'll get back to his adp which i don't know if he does is shea gills alexander 55 default rank 96 currently nine cat average so if you think he's getting anywhere closer to that 55 rank, which I'm not sure he does, I think he is a little overhyped coming into the year. Mm-hmm. I'm not quite sure why. Uh, if anything, I thought it was because of the defensive stats, but they're pretty lackluster so far. 1.0 steals on the season and 0.5 blocks. So, I mean, if you think those numbers are coming up, you could probably buy low on him. But anyone who drafted him probably took him so high that they're probably not wanting to give him up. What do you think, Adrian? Man, I can I tell you, I feel so lucky. Uh, in my home league, two point guards that I lucked out on, I'm going to tell you. So I had like pick nine. So like towards the end of that first round, um, on the coming back around the, in round two, I wanted Drew Holiday and Kemba Walker. They both go off the board right before plan C 
for me is Trey Young. <laughs> and now I would like I I literally got offered Drew Holiday for Trey Young, and I said no freaking way. Like, and then um, Kurt later in that draft, I Shea Gillis Alexander was a must draft guy. I forget what round it was, but right before my pick, I get sniped. Backup plan was Jaw Morant, and now I'd rather nice. have Jaw. So two two spots, Kurt, where I felt like I didn't get the guy I wanted, and now I got the better guy. Like I like I feel like I've got the better guy, even though Jaw Morant currently out right now. Although we're hearing he's close, um, you know, even though Sh- uh, Shea definitely not living up to those expectations, I still think he is a good buy low because I think he he will get better as the season goes on. And if at some point Chris Paul does get moved, I think we could see a major explosion in um, his output, in his usage, in um his numbers so i i love the idea of buying low kurt i know a lot of guys a lot of my friends that have shea gills alexander they're pretty disappointed in him so i think yeah, if, you, you might. Mm-hmm, i think if you do want to buy low i think you, like because the guys my friends that i talk to who are so disappointed they've got they're just so negative about him because just they had such they used such a high draft pick to get him i think you could definitely buy low on him right now yeah man there was there was one of the industry guys who was hyping him as a third round player and don't don't you hate it when there's somebody that you're interested in and people just hype the get the hype (laughs) train just full steam ahead and you're like man i like this guy but there's no way i'm taking him in the third round before hearing some of that hype i'm like sixth round seventh round i don't know maybe that's too low but like you said, that's awesome when those things work out where the guys that you're targeting get taken and the guy you pick actually has better value. <laughs> it kind of kind of goes into what Dan talks about sometimes. Like you you zag when everybody else is zigging or you zig when they're zagging. You know, let, let them go for those crazy hype guys that aren't proven. You go with old reliable and then you are sitting there with the, maybe the less exciting guy but the guy that's just popping off. And not that I would consider Trey Young a less exciting guy. Like you said, he's he's been amazing. I think he'll be a back of the first round type of guy for quite a few years to come, especially in eight eight cap. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's that's amazing. I, it's sometimes it's better to be lucky than good, you know. Oh, I guess so, man. I I I'd rather be good because you know as a fantasy <laughs> analyst, you want to feel like you're good. But I gotta admit, man, I got really lucky in those two spots in my home league kurt what went down on the portland side of this game all right brother i know you want to hear about carmelo anthony (laughs) you've been raving about this guy uh no but in all serious seriousness tonight only four of 18 from the field which isn't great he'll shoot better than that on most nights nine points eight boards three steals Uh, the it's just a little annoying that he feels like at age 35, uh, you know, rolling around in his wheelchair out there that he's going to have to jack up 18 shots and cost the Blazers a win against Oklahoma city. Not that it was all him. They shot 36% as a team tonight. So just terrible overall, but dude, you do not need to be taking 18 shots. I was hesitant to pick him up anywhere. He's currently 130 on the season prior to tonight. And man, that's crazy. His, his ownage, own percentage in yahoo is 73 percent that's just nuts i feel like there are so many players that are better than him that are around like 50s and 40s um daniel house is owned in like 45 percent of leagues i'd rather have him markel fultz is only owned in like 50 percent of leagues i'd rather have him just kind of crazy uh crazy how far name value can get you that being the case take advantage of that if you have mellow and people are clearly overvaluing him the next time he pops off for 20 points, try to sell him. Hassan Whiteside, he was one of my favorite targets mid-round and draft. I think we talked about this, Adrian. I, I overcommitted on point guards early on. Sometimes I went point guard, point guard, point guard, point guard. And I thought, you know, even if I'm heavy on point guards, I'll at least somebody's going to need these guys, and I'll sell them off later on. Because of that, Hassan Whiteside was one of my favorite targets later on for a double-double guy with blocks. He's been having a nice season, 14-10 and 10 tonight three assists, five blocks. He only took eight shots. So if you got a couple more, you're looking at like a 20 and 10 line with five blocks. Just amazing. Mello, give up the ball to Whiteside a little more, please. Whiteside currently number 31 on a per game average. He's having a great year. Injuries are always a tiny bit concerning. Okay, a decent amount concerning with Whiteside. 
but he's been having such a good year. I would just hold on. Maybe you can sell high, but I honestly don't know who I would trade for him. Uh, somebody like Miles Turner comes to mind. Maybe Rudy Gobert. That's probably going to be shot down in most instances, but he's actually performing better, way better than both of them right now. I don't know. You can give me your take on that in a minute, Adrian. Um, Damian Lillard, 8 of 24 from the field. He's not usually that bad from the field. 2 of 12 from three-point land. So that explains some of the misses. Perfect 8 of 8 from the free throw line. 26 points, 3 boards, 7 assists, 1 steal. Dame's having a good year. He's currently number 8 on the season, which is his default rank in a lot of places. So great for Dame. Kent Bazemore is probably the guy that you want to pay the most attention to here with Rodney Hood being out for the year with an Achilles tear. Bazemore played 36 minutes. He had nine points, five boards, two assists, one block, three three three-pointers. Oddly enough, what he didn't have is any steals, which is one of the main reasons you want Bazemore. Uh, If you have somebody to cut, I could see picking him up because he's usually going to get the defensive numbers. He's going to get you the threes. Don't expect a lot of scoring. But if Melo wants to share the ball at all, uh, Bazemore will probably end up being a standard league guy. So couldn't blame you for picking him up. CJ McCollum, also bad shooting, 8 of 21 from the field. 20 points, 5 boards, 2 assists, 2 steals, 2 threes. He's been all right. Uh, Scala VCA off the bench, 0 points, 7 boards, 1 assist. Only played 16 minutes. There was some buzz about him because he had one decent game while Whiteside was out. Probably not somebody you're looking at, even in 16-teamers. And Fernie Simons. This guy's fun because he's a rookie, so people want to like him. But all he does is score and hit threes. And tonight he only scored seven and hit one three. One steal, one block, three rebounds. I'm not picking him up anywhere. Maybe 16-teamers. That's all I got in these Blazers, Adrian. What did I miss? You know, Kurt, I love when... Right when you started talking about Portland, I was thinking to myself... One thing I want to mention, because it could be a little sneaky under the radar, is Bazemore. I think he's a sneaky pickup. And then I love when you mention it, and you kind of just say exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> um, you, you know, didn't have it go in here tonight. Only shot 3 of 11 for 9 points. But I'm going to tell you, Kurt, I think it's very encouraging that he started, played 36 minutes, and the fact that he even took 11 shots in this game lets you sure. know that you know if, if more of these shots just went down, this could be a much better line. And the reason why we love Bazemore is he's one of these 1-1-1 one, one, one guys that they talk about, can give you a steal, a block, and a three. And you love any guys that can do that. So I think even in standard leagues, this is a sneaky guy to pick up with Hood I think Hood's done for the season, and it looks like Bazemore is going to be the guy from what we saw tonight, just the fact that he got all the minutes. So go pick up Bazemore, man. I think he's your guy. To touch on your white side take, man, and I got to eat a little crow on this one because I didn't believe in Whiteside coming into draft day. I was dead wrong, man. Whiteside is fantastic. He's sitting at a second round value. I'll be honest with you. If if nobody wants to trade those guys you talked about for Whiteside, stick with Whiteside, man, because he is just killing it. Um, you know, didn't even shoot it bad from the line tonight. Like, tonight is beautiful. The five blocks, the double-double on good percentages, man. He's been fantastic, and I have no reason to think that this could be is a fluke because you know um he's just locked and loaded so stick with white side he's been great man yeah and and what's crazy is everyone's like ah he can't he can't get back to that second round value he had a couple years ago mainly his free throw percentage is the only thing that brought him down last year Mm -hmm. and free throw percentage or free throw shooting is like a mental thing and with as much as he was getting jerked around in Miami it seemed to be a thing with him and Spolstra Spolstra didn't really like him so mentally if he's thinking like he's not appreciated on the team you know that can explain the free throw messes he'd been fine for his career I'm I'm not looking at any stats here but I think he was around 70 percent his whole year so he doesn't kill you there and I think he's at around 75 this year last time I heard uh, it may have gone down since, but last time I heard in the last week or so, he was averaging a career high. So I wouldn't necessarily call his free throw percentage a fluke either. I think you can keep that going. Adrian, this might sound silly to say, but if it was between him and Miles Turner, who would you go for? Man. Maybe 
I would I would rather have Whiteside. I'll be honest with you. Miles Turner, I think, has been a disappointment. Uh, Sabo yes. Sabonis is just killing Miles Turner right now. Sabonis is just the more aggressive guy. You, like, night to night, when you look at the box score, you see Sabonis with these gaudy double doubles, and you see Miles <laughs> Turner with like nine points, eight boards. I love that Miles Turner is definitely giving you some blocks, which is great, and can give you more threes. So I do understand why. Why Miles Turner? People consider him like the better guy, but man, I'll tell you what. I'll, in a side by side, I'll take Whiteside there. Yeah, Turner's rebounds are well; they've never been great, but they're definitely down. He's deferring to Sabonis, and like you said, on the nights where his blocks aren't there, his his lines look very, very bad. Low, yeah. So yeah, and and uh, he's just not a go like Miles Turner is just not a go getter, and you, now all of a sudden you put a guy like Sabonis next to him. That guy's a vacuum, man. That guy grabs every board. He's all over the place, and we're definitely seeing Miles Turner take a hit. And Whiteside, like I feel like there's nobody there in that front court to challenge Whiteside. Whiteside's one of those guys that like can flirt with the 2020 game. Like there's only a few guys in the league like. Uh, Clint Capella is one of those guys, and you know I throw Whiteside in that category, man. Yeah, and and let me just give you my take on this real quick. Let me let me know if I'm going into too many tangents here, but I have Whiteside in a lot of places, and I try to sell him. And you know how you can do like the chat back and forth with the manager, where the manager will be like, "LOL, no way," or <laughs> "How about this or that?" All people when i'm trying to sell him and i'm not trying to sell him for cheap don't get me wrong but when i'm trying to sell him people say he's gonna vanish when Nurkic comes back he can't play in march are you serious like portland lost again they're playing their way out of the playoffs they, they might already be starting to eliminate themselves from the playoffs so as the season goes on what is their incentive to play Nurk? None. He's coming off this gruesome injury you know injuries can be pretty bad for big guys like even linger longer I don't – I'm just kind of pulling this out of nowhere, but I don't really see Nurt coming back before February, March. And if he does, they have no reason – he's not going to jump in there and play 35 minutes a game. I mean, he's going to miss back-to-backs most likely. It might be like a thing we're seeing with Kevon Looney's kind of minute management. You know, he might be out there 10 minutes, miss the next game, 15 minutes, mix the next game. So I don't see that hurting Whiteside. And Whiteside isn't somebody that needs a big amount of minutes. He doesn't need – 35 32 minutes i'm honestly to avoid injury the perfect white side scenario is probably around 26 to 28 minutes so they have gosh i've had a couple of drinks here adrian what is it 48 minutes in a game so even if they were to if nurt got it up to speed and they could split that 50 50 24 minutes that's fine for white side maybe he takes a small ding maybe five ten percent but then they also don't have anybody else in the front court Scal's not pushing these guys. Um, Zach Collins is out for the foreseeable future, if if not the whole season. So, one again, one more tangent here, Adrian. What is your take on Nurk? And if you had Whiteside, are you at all con concerned about Nurk's return? Not at all. It, and it's pretty much everything you talked about. Why would Portland push Nurkic to come back or? Give him heavy minutes that he's not ready for when they're completely out of it. Um, <clears throat> the other thing I want to mention as a general rule that I live by is any guy that's coming off of a gruesome, serious injury, Gordon Hayward's injury, Victor Aladipo's injury, Nurkic's injury, I never expect them to be the same for a, till like a full year, meaning... You know, I hear a lot about, oh, should I go trade for Aladipo? I'm not expecting us to see the same Victor Aladipo because I think it's going to take him a full season to be the guy. So I don't think we see the, the Victor Aladipo we saw last year till next year. The same way we're seeing Gordon Hayward, a big improvement from last year to this year. I think it's just because it takes guys that come off of an injury like that it takes a long time for these guys to get to 100 percent and i agree with you 100 percent kurt maybe we see Whiteside take a small hit and i mean a small hit this guy's returning second round value so 
big deal if he loses half a round of value or maybe at worst a full round of value a big deal so yes sir i agree with you and you know if, I, i'm telling you if people don't want to trade on your white side offers hey if you're sticking with a guy who you drafted nowhere near where he's returning value just just roll with it and enjoy the ride man and and adrian on the flip side if you don't own white side and you're in a league with these managers who think he's going to tail off and not be there for the playoffs if you're in a head-to-head league buy this guy buy him if they're thinking yeah he's great now this this could be one of those fake kind of sell highs where the owner thinks oh my gosh this is great i need to sell him when really, this is what he's going to give you all season. Um, and, and, you know, I, I just want to mention, too, I'm not a big, like, reality-wise, I'm not a big Whiteside fan. Um, I was I had low expectations for him. He wasn't a guy that I was targeting, drafting anywhere. So I am saying this just because he has just blown me away with his performance and what he's providing um, fantasy-wise, what, what, his, what he's doing. So um, he's turned me into a fan. I'm not a big Whiteside guy. I never have been, but um, I just love what he's doing this year yeah and, it, and it's crazy because sometimes guys who don't look great out there uh they just have a way of being those stat magnets that get you stats like Nikola Jokic or uh yeah Nikola Jokic for example today like I said he looked like I mean I only watched the first half but that was half of his stats he was at 15 points by then he looked like trash out there he looked overweight he couldn't make a shot there was one play where he literally turned it over by handing the ball to the other team like he looked like hot garbage yet turned in this amazing line so sometimes the eye test can be deceiving and just because Whiteside doesn't always look like the most motivated player on the court fantasy wise that 15 points 12 boards two and a half blocks per game is amazing um you mentioned one thing, Adrian. Let me go on just a tiny bit of a tangent here. Oladipo, you mentioned how his return's kind of up in the air. I, I took one of my fabled uh, buy low because they're injured, so to speak, approaches here. I bought him in almost every league. One league, I was able to actually turn, um, who was it, Goran Dragic oh, nice. into. So that yeah. probably won't happen in most leagues. But... I, I don't mind buying low on Victor Oladipo, especially like that's that's beautiful. But um, I've seen guys who are just they're making the trade as in right from day one when he's back, it's going to be the stud Victor Oladipo who two seasons oh, ago no. was like flirting with first round value. I'm telling you guys, when you come off a gruesome injury, it takes time for these guys to come back. So I'm like my expectations for Oladipo a little low. Now I'm okay though with trading for him, especially too. I think the Pacers could really use him at at the two like they're they're missing him at the two right now but um uh i just it's just a general rule that i live by kurt i never expect a guy coming off of a major gruesome injury and like last year demarcus cousins proved me wrong demarcus cousins came back last season and was balling right away and i was like wow i did not expect that so you know it's 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 not a hundred percent true all the time but i find generally takes a full year so when these guys come back in the middle of the year the way they do we we normally don't see them the 100 percent same until the following season so i don't know kurt yeah. okay and, and what's great though let me just keep going on a tangent here Adrian. <laughs> <laughs> just driving the missus crazy um oladipo we thought he was nearing return because he's been doing five on five for so long so a lot of people are like if he's on the wire which he never should have been on any wires pick him up oh maybe yeah. try to sell him but people were getting stoked because it looked like he was on pace for a december return mm -hmm. and then the last update kind of threw some cold water on that where he said his return as loose as a goose and it's not about playing this year i think was his quote it's about walking for the next 15 so He's very serious about his health. The fact that the Pacers are in a playoff position, I think we'll see him back this year. And he does have that potential to be a difference maker, especially in steals. But then again, that remains to be seen after such a gruesome injury. But with that news, where the hype was mounting with him, with that news, it kind of throws some cold water on that. If you're in a league that has IRs, especially if you're in a league that has two IRs, and you have room to accommodate a secondary injury, with that news, I think you can probably you might be able to steal him away at a at a cheap price. 
I like that idea, and uh, I think he's closer than that, man. Just the fact that he's, you know, practicing with the G, with their G League team and whatnot that 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 usually means that they're pretty close. So, um, yeah. All right, Kurt, let's jump over to the final game of the evening: the Minnesota Vikings, Minnesota Timberwolves. I almost <laughs> said Vikings right there. Oh my goodness, <laughs> Minnesota Timberwolves taking on the Los Angeles Lakers. Not too much of a surprise here, man. The Lakers, twenty and three. They've just been, uh, they've been insane. One forty-two for the Lakers, one twenty-five for the. Timberwolves. I'm going to look in on the Minnesota side. I'm going to start with uh, Carl Anthony Towns, 19 points, 8 assists, a steal, 4 boards, uh, 1-3, 7-16 shooting. Rough matchup with Towns here tonight, getting matched up against uh, the juggernaut Laker front court. Um, Wiggins has been spectacular this year, but tonight, again, rough matchup for Wiggins. 19 points, 3 assists, 2 boards, 1-3 on 8-15 of shooting. Uh, Rocco Bob Covington, 16 points, three steals, four boards on four of eight shooting. Um, Jarrett Culver, their rookie. Uh, you know, uh, I'm I'm curious right now. This guy's kind of fringe standard league guy. I know he's kind of owned everywhere. Um, I think at some point in the year he's going to be a reliable option. I think he's going to start really putting it together. I think Minnesota's going to be out of it, and they're just going to go and really look to develop their younger young core so uh Jarrett culver 12 points four assists two boards this is actually a decent usable line here tonight because the shooting wasn't bad five of six shooting from the field gave you a three kurt a sneaky guy a guy that i'm gonna look to pick up in a few leagues josh okoji is starting this is his second game in a row uh 12 points um the last game 18 points here tonight one assist four boards in some deeper leagues like 14 teams and deeper i think i might pick this guy up uh, where i have some dead weight on my roster three threes i love that he you know gave you threes usually can give you some defensive stats as well so um I think he's a sneaky at uh, Teague coming off the bench. 12 points for him. He had a really big game earlier in the week, though. So um, hang tight with Teague. You know, even though he's coming off the bench, I think he could still be a standard league guy because he could just uh, destroy those second units. And um, as long as he's getting minutes, you know, tonight, 24, as long as it doesn't dip in the low 20s or high teens, I think Teague should be okay. Um not, not too much else to talk about. What, what do you think of the Timberwolves? Uh, main thing, like you said, is Jeff Teague coming off the bench. Lots of people are dropping him. I know some people who own him, and I own him in a few spots because you needed those assists later in drafts. He only got you one tonight, which kind of hurts, and the four turnovers, so bad assist-to-turnover ratio there. And he's supposed to come off the bench but for the foreseeable future. But if he's getting 25 to 30 minutes off the bench, beating up on team second units, uh, I expect him to be fine. Like his assists have been good. He only his value is in those assists, six, seven, eight assists. You can't find that on the wire. So if you drop him, uh, I mean, I really want to know who you're picking up who's getting you more assists than Teague. Maybe, maybe an Alfred Payton type, but that's that remains to be seen. Hold on to him. You probably won't see him drop because of his last game, which was, gosh, probably one of his best games in the last couple of years. I like your take on Akoji, and I like how you say his name, Akoji. I say it Akoji <laughs> as well. I hear people say it Akogi, but Akoji just is so much more fun. Um, and I got to admit, he wasn't on my radar. When he was starting prior to tonight, he was, and then he kind of vanished. I wasn't really paying much attention to him. So I like your take on him. I'm going to be keeping a look on him. The other guy who I feel like has been quiet this year is Rocco. Most people, at least us hoop bars, love this guy. And some people who are just casual NBA fans don't even know his name because he doesn't score a ton. But his value is in those intangibles, those cash counters, the three, the three three-pointers, the three steals, the block. He is currently on the season... He's Minnesota's second best guy at number 46. So, and I feel like nothing's really been said about him this year. He's really quiet. He was preseason number 41, and he's currently number 46 in nine cat. So, 
I don't know, I could be wrong, but just based on the fact that he's not getting a lot of hype, only scoring 12 points a game, but his field goal percentage is up at 46, his free throw percentage is at almost 89, and he's getting you the 2.13s, the 1.3 steals, the 0.9 blocks, and that's actually lower than where we've seen it from him. I think even though he's not performing badly by any means, I think you could maybe buy low just because he doesn't score a lot and because his his name value isn't there. So I would definitely try to do that. Uh, Let me see. Other than that, Wiggins, who's had a great year, he's had a total transformation, kind of like a Brandon Ingram type. He's slowly coming back to earth. I don't think he'll fall a ton, but he's currently number 56 on the season. So he's slowly coming back down. Hurt by the free throw percentage at 71. He still has 1.3 blocks, which is amazing. I never saw that coming from Wiggins. Um, If you own him, you probably can't sell him to make much of a profit considering he was drafted a lot of times around 110, 120. But maybe the owner sees this small gradual dip. And I'm all about the buy lows and the sell highs, Adrian. I know you probably are too. I think maybe it, he's not a buy low because he's performing about 60 spots higher than where he was drafted. But you might be able to get him for cheaper than what he'll finish the year at. What do, what do you think about that? Yeah, I, I like that take. I think for sure he's, he would be able to finish, um, finish in a nice spot. I like that take. Yeah, definitely. Um, Kurt, what went down on the Lakers side of this game? All right, good, sir. Anthony Davis. He, uh, sorry, I'm throwing those sirs out there. I, I do that a lot. <laughs> uh, Anthony Davis, who's been a little quiet so far this year. I And this might sound crazy as the guy who came into the season ranked number one. He's currently number three in nine cat average, at least prior to tonight. So... That sounds crazy for a guy two spots lower than where what his default rank was, but he's a bit of a buy low. At least he was before tonight. Tonight might have killed it. 50 points, 7 boards, 6 assists, 4 steals, 1 block, perfect 10 of 10 from the free throw line, 20 of 29 from the field. I'm no mathematician, but that's somewhere near uh, 70%, so pretty nice there. Man, he, that, he's having a great year. I'd say a quietly great year, given that he's number three, non-cat average. And you could maybe get him at a discount. I don't know what your take is on the two, but if you were to trade Carl Anthony Towns for Davis, that I mean, that's probably a toss-up. I'm not sure which one I'd rather have. Maybe AD for the defensive numbers, but I feel like Cat has more hype. Uh, LeBron James, 32 points, four boards, 13 assists, one steal. I think... He's leading the league in assists. He's having a great year. He's currently number 10 on the season. I thought he was a first-round draft pick this year when a lot of people were putting him in the middle of the second round. I heard some people putting him around pick 25, which I thought was ridiculous. Uh, JaVale McGee starting, six points, five boards, no defensive numbers, only 16 minutes. Danny Green, he's one of those quietly decent guys to own. He does that in the defensive numbers in the threes, 12 and eight tonight with one assist, two steals, four three-pointers. All of his shots were from three-point land. He's currently number 133 on the season, default rank 132, so pretty crazy how close that is. He's not amazing by any means, but he's kind of like last man on your roster type value. I, I couldn't blame you for holding on to him. If there's a hot free agent, I also couldn't blame you for cutting him. Contavious Caldwell Pope, has been okay in the last couple games. Nine points, two boards, five assists, one three. We know he can light it up from downtown if he gets the chance, but I'm not interested here. Uh, Maybe 14 teamers, but that's even a reach. I'd say maybe 16 teamers you could look to him. Off the bench, the future MVP, Kyle Kuzma. He played 26 minutes, seven points, one rebound, one assist, one three. You might think he's due to be the third best guy on this team that'd be completely wrong he's currently number 300 300 on the season 
on the strengths of a pristine 43% from the field, 69 from the free throw line, and just really not doing a whole lot else. He's way over owned. He is owned in 43% of loans, or sorry, 40, 73% of teams uh, leagues own him. I would much rather have a guy like uh, Terrence Ross, who's only owned in around 50% of leagues. Uh, Duncan Robinson is around somewhere 50% of leagues. Yet Kyle Kuzma, I don't know if it's the name brand. Somebody saying he's the former, the future MVP. He's a cut pretty much everywhere for me. Dwight Howard, eight boards, six, sorry, six boards, eight assists. Uh, he's not a standard league guy. Alex Caruso had an okay line off the bench. 16, four, and four with two steals, two threes, played 30 minutes. And really, Adrian, outside of Davis and James, you're really, really reaching here. And I'm not doing it. I don't think there's anybody who's worth picking up here. What do you think? I agree with you, Kurt. Another, it, I feel like it's been the theme for some of these teams here tonight. Just two guys doing the heavy lifting, and then from night to night, a team where you know we. Danny Green had a nice line tonight, but Danny Green could disappear the next one, and then all of a sudden it could be Kuzma has a nice line. Kuzma wasn't great here, but it's just so tough. Other than the two main guys, so it seems to be uh, the. Th- theme for this team and a few other teams um other than that man you 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 pretty much nailed the lakers we know who they are a really great team though and anthony davis has been spectacular uh lebron james too it is really uh shocking to hear i forgot about how low a lot of people had him ranked so glad that you mentioned that kurt I think that about wraps it up, man. Let's put a bow on this one. Uh, of course, we went long, but, you know, a really busy eight-game slate, and we want to cover everything. We want to go in-depth. And uh, so we had to do our thing, man. But, Kurt, where could the listeners find you at? Adrian, listeners can find me at, at Captain Canegis on Twitter, C-A-P-T-C-A-I-N-E-G-H-I-S. Uh, you probably won't spell that right on the first time, so just look in the description. It's right there. If you can't spell that right, power to you. Uh, hit us up with your your ads, your drops, your trade questions. Get back to you pretty quickly, unless I'm at work. And let us know how how we're doing. If you think that we're missing anything, you think we're doing great, you think we're doing terrible, let us know, and we'll try to incorporate as many opinions as we can. Adrian, where can you be found? I'm at Adrian Benjamins. Hit hit me up as well. As Kurt just said, we love hearing from you guys. Uh, any questions, any suggestions, we love to hear it. Thank you guys so much for listening and supporting the show. Uh, hope you guys are having a great week and a great uh, fantasy season so far. And we will talk to you later. Have a good one. This has been a Hoop Bowl presentation.